Welcome to Escape the Rumors presents Behind the Masterminds, and this is episode seven. And we have a really special guest today, but we'll get to that in a minute because we got to announce some uh, Winner. raffle winners from our last, well, not the last episode, episode so five, ah. and uh, it was from Coop Quest. Coop Quest. So they were giving away three Prince Cousin escapings, um, and our first winner. Who's it? Who's it? Who's it? Number one. Okay. Neil Murphy. Neil, congratulations. Awesome. You got one of their awesome games that they offer. Three, three games. Three games, oh, yeah. Bundles. Um, okay, our next one is Best Kawaii Wedding Video. Wow, all the way from Kawaii. Congratulations. Uh, all right. You got one more. Next one, our third winner is Melissa. Melissa Jensen. Congratulations, Please Melissa. Thank you to uh, claim the prizes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but more importantly, uh, we have a really special guest today, and it is Rita from Post Curious. Hey, Rita, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you? Good. We're good. We're good. Before we go on to announce like, who she is and what she's done, we want to make sure that everyone knows that if you pre order her game, the Emerald Flame, in the next 24 hours, you will receive a special enamel pin. It's really beautiful, valued at $10. And all you have to do is type in the section in her additional note section uh, in the booking website, uh, Escape the Worst. And she will definitely note that. And when she sends out the game in 2021, you will receive that beautiful enamel pin. Yeah. So, going forward with our introduction, our special guest today. Um, Vida, she is a narrative uh, tabletop game um, designer. She has done the Tale of or the Ord, right? The Tale of the Ord. Tale and one. yes, and now her newest game is called the Emerald Flame. Oh wow! Yeah, that was a really exciting game for yeah. us. <laughs> it was definitely exciting. Beautiful box too. Like, Thank I you. Think and that's not even a real box. <laughs> that's not even a real box, <laughs> right? I can't wait to see what the real one looks like. I mean. Um, but is everything ready to go, like in terms of final production? Yeah, basically. Um, at this point, I'm just waiting on some factory samples to arrive. So every like the wheels are turning. It's just sometimes they turn a little slowly. Um, all right. Yeah. <clears throat> sorry, but yeah, things are definitely moving along. Um, all my files are like 98 percent done. So. It's that's great. Yeah. 98% is a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. <laughs> Can't wait to see the final product. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our first question for you. The yeah. inspirations of creating these games, where did they come from? Like, do you all of a sudden wake up one day and you're like, I'm going to create this beautiful, you know, thing that is from, I don't know. I mean, these were from, the, I don't, we never played the first game, so I'm not sure if there's any connection with the two games. Um, but from the aspect of inspiration wise, do they come just, you know, in your head one day or you actually planned this for a while? Um, it sort of depends. Um, for Tale of Ord, it was heavily inspired by Norse mythology. So when I started designing the game, it was sort of themed first and I kind of based the story and the puzzles around that. Um, for Emerald Flame, it originated with uh, two things. One of them was my trip to Prague, which just, I found a lot of really cool things in that city, so I wanted to do something um, something with that. And I also found the Voynich Manuscript, which is like a medieval alchemical manuscript with a lot of um, crazy astronomical and botanic diagrams and stuff. Um, so that was kind of the jumping off point for the Emerald Flame. And once I found that, I started looking up all the other alchemical manuscript books that are out there, and things kind of flowed from there. Wow. Okay. Pop does have those special tunnels you were talking about in the game itself? Like, are these actual... They do exist, but they don't necessarily exist in the same way that they exist okay. in the game. Okay. Gotcha. Like the game, the game, it's kind of a, you know, there, there is fact and there is fiction on it and it, you know, it's meant to be sort of hard to tell where exactly one ends and the other begins. Wow. Yeah. That was very uh, interesting for me because I was thinking like as we were playing through the game, everything you described in the game was sort of, you know, 
it, if, it, if it was true, like all these uh, ancient contexts and the storyline behind it, really pulled us into feeling like we were there. And, you know, as we're going through the storyline, uh, the puzzles itself, we're trying, like, it felt like we were in the game at the frog location. Yeah. Yeah. So, we felt really, the that's really great to hear. Yeah. I mean, I, I, think I, we, I just really love the city. So I wanted to kind of convey that in the game and, you know, bring people into seeing the things that I was seeing in it. Yeah. I'm I sorry, think playing again, we kind of felt the inspiration that you felt while playing it. So, um, yeah, it was an awesome game. Yeah. So um, I know you talked a little bit about it, but the process of creating the game, uh, do you do storyline first and puzzles or vice versa? It, yeah, it also depends. So I, I mostly work on them both at the same time. Um, for Emerald Flame, I kind of started on some puzzles and then started thinking of the story and how the puzzles were going to fit into the story. So um, those were kind of affected a little bit by where the story was going, but I guess I'm more of a puzzle designer than a narrative designer. So it's I feel like the story kind of usually fits more into how I want the puzzles to go, um, but they definitely affect each other because obviously I want them to make sense in the context of the story. So is it easier for you to uh, go puzzle first and then do the story? Or in a way, I mean, I can't design puzzles in a complete vacuum. Like I have to at least have an outline so of the story. So I usually like maybe create myself a guide uh, with kind of plot points that have to happen and then sort of fill in like, oh, I have a puzzle idea for this map and that's going to fit into this part of the story. So I'm going to, you know, allocate that into part one. And then at this point in the story, they have to figure out um, how to get from here to here. So that puzzle is going to go in that section. Right. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's usually because I feel like different uh, puzzle designers have their ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some like to go with the storyline first, and then they have to have an ending made before the beginning, because they need to get to Well, it helps them. to have the ending, it's true. Because, <laughs> I mean, in a certain way, like, you, you're trying to get to somewhere in the end, and you're trying to get the player there in the end. And so it has to drive a little bit how the puzzles are designed, because you have to figure out what the end point for the puzzle is. And if I know that my final answer is going to be a word or a number or a symbol, then I might approach the way that I design that puzzle differently. So if I know mm -hmm. the final thing that you have to find out is a phrase, then obviously it's going to be something that includes letters in some way. Um, so it has to be adapted to to fit into that. Um, and I also there were there were some there were a couple puzzles that you know kind of could have gone either in part one or two, which I'm sure you notice like the ingredients for finding the potion. Um, so part of organizing those was like figuring out how many, um, like the similarities between the puzzles so that there was a good variety in each part, um, so that there was sort of, uh, you know, word things and number things and visual things, and it wasn't skewing too heavily toward one or the other in each individual envelope. Um, and yeah. also having like a variety in terms of the difficulty because I wouldn't want to like load all the easy or all the difficult puzzles into one or the other so that you always kind of have a good variety of things to play with. Yeah. Do, do you I find it easier to uh, start backwards, like like you were saying before, to know how it's going to end, know what the final, you know, uh, obstacle is and then work backwards? Um, to some degree. I mean, a lot of times I'll just get puzzle ideas, so I'll kind of jot those down and figure out where they go, but Definitely, once you're really trying to put the whole thing together, I feel like I need to know what the ending's going to be and what the final puzzle might look like. Um, mm. Because, you know, you want the ending to be satisfying, and both right. in terms of the story and in terms of what the puzzle is that you're, you know, it's sort of like the finale, right, uh, yeah. to a show. Yeah. So you want it to feel like it's something substantial, and I think that usually does better with prior planning, because then you know this is the substantial thing that everything is kind of working toward and then you just have to like chart the path there. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah that final thing is very important because you know sometimes it's that twist that or that cliffhanger that brings your next uh, stories to the next level. So, um, And also you do have a lot of like 
whole element yeah. that I noticed in the game, and they're so beautiful. Um, there's like so many different pieces and whatnot. And when you're doing these, uh, you know, puzzles that you're designing, do you already thought of what you're going to include as these blocks? And um, the outsource uh, element also would probably need to be considered prior, right? Because I, we've heard the of the design. The, the, the outsourcing, outsourcing for the products. For the, where no, you make these and things oh, like oh. that. Do you need to like think about those things prior? Because we've heard from game designers that um, sometimes they think, you know, they thought of something really cool and then they're like, we're going to include this in the puzzle, but then at the end they're like, oh man, where do I find to like buy these things now? Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely a challenge. Um, I, I knew that my plan for this game was to have it manufactured at a larger scale so I was trying to think of what things are going to be feasible to manufacture that are not going to be like handmade because Tale of Ward had a lot of um, hand assembled stuff that you wouldn't really be able to do um, mm -hmm. but the, I did still end up with a couple of really complicated components that <laughs> um, that the factory is working on sampling right now so hopefully hopefully they'll <laughs> turn out the way I want Right. right. Yeah, those are also the, so. How many, um, I guess, steps do you go through in terms of coming up with this final product? Right, like, let's say, uh, sample wise, how many times do you go through? Um, that's a good question. I think it depends on the piece in particular, but like for for physical puzzles, I have to get at least some kind of sample pretty early on. Um, with that particular thing that you were holding up. I tried at first to like just print it on like a clear sheet and just make a really like a really simple prototype. And usually I'll do something really simple, just like hand drawn or like cut out or whatever. Um, just uh, like for the first maybe couple play tests, just to see if the puzzle even works. Because sometimes you think you have a great idea and then it doesn't make any sense to anybody. Or um, actually, before I printed it on the plastic sheet, I printed it out of paper and I cut it out and then I was like, that doesn't work. It needs to be transparent. <laughs> <laughs> like, it didn't work at all. Um, so step one, failure. Step two, oh, a step, step three, hopefully. Um, yeah. This one, this one is, I actually have it right here also. Um, so this is laser cut acrylic and the backing is like a chipboard, which I had printed at the Game Crafter. Um, okay. And I had I had the laser cut acrylic for most of my samples, but I didn't get the um, the chipboard printed until basically I was ready to send out review copies, um, just because it wasn't really worth it. Like for for play testing, you can I just used like a printed piece of um, like a like a thinner piece that I could print on myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I mean like we definitely see the quality of it, so for sure. Also, uh, how long? Well, I'm pretty sure we were going to ask this question uh, somewhere during the interview. But how long from concept to completion did this uh, did uh, Emerald Queen take you? So like it took uh, it took about two years. Yeah, two but years. like, yeah, with you know having a full time job and like life yeah. in between and stuff. So. <laughs> this isn't your full time job. Yeah, I was going to say like. <laughs> it is, yeah. it feels like it. it. Feels like it though, right? Like you have two jobs. It, two full -time it, always jobs. Felt, it always felt like I had two full time jobs for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, one of our uh, listeners are saying that the Vanovich manuscripts are super cool. Mm. And, uh, and um, he said that congrats on choosing this as an inspiration. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, also, I noticed that you have a lot of uh, these beautiful graphics that are drawn in the game itself. Uh, the butterflies and the flowers, they look so real. Um, do you have a background in illustrations? Sort of. Um, I mean, I guess you could say yes. <laughs> I used to draw and um, paint a lot, like in high school and college, and then I kind of didn't really draw very much for a while. and. When I started working on Emerald Flame, uh, I had an idea that I wanted to do the artwork for it. So I kind of just, I, I was like taking a trip somewhere and I started just drawing on the plane. And then I was like, oh yeah, that's what this is like. So I just like practiced, um, you know, for a couple months before I actually started doing the real artwork because, you know, it was in its early prototype stages anyway. So uh, I had to make sure that like, all the puzzles kind of worked before I started really making the final art because it's a lot harder to adjust 
uh, mm -hmm. watercolors than, you know, just a pencil drawing. Sure. Right. So the final uh, printouts, they're going to be, are they going to be individually drawn? No, right? You're not doing all the water drawings on all the games, or you are putting like, some sort of personal touch? What do you mean? Like the actual uh, final uh, game. Because um, it's going to be... Different. It's going to be basically the way that you have it. Like the the number of changes between the prototype and the final are actually really not that many. Um, it's just like there were a couple components in there that are 3D printed, for example. So um, instead of being 3D printed, those are going to be cast in uh, poly resin, and they're going to have like a nice design on it that I couldn't do for the prototype because 3D printing doesn't really um, show detail very well. Mm -hmm. So. So yeah. it's just going to be like a few material changes, but in terms of the game, it's it's all going to be the same. Oh, okay. Because I feel like the print quality is really good. Like the colors are so really vibrant. Yeah. Even though you know they're printed versus the like we said you previously did the hand drawn and the watercoloring, but the mm -hmm. actual final finished product still feels like they're like, hand drawn, which is really awesome. Yeah, that's that's definitely what I was hoping for. I feel like you can. I mean, you could just tell the difference between hand drawn and computer drawn. So even printing it out, it still kind of looks more realistic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Also, there's a texture quality to it from something that's hand drawn and printed out. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so the obstacles. I know I've, you've already talked about a few, but do you have one major one that you encountered uh, during this game? Um. Uh, well, putting. I mean, definitely, just figuring out the components uh, was hard. But I think in terms of, like, I'm pretty new to manufacturing and this whole. I mean, even Kickstarter, this was the first Kickstarter that I did, and um, figuring out how to, like, set up worldwide shipping is a huge yeah. challenge. <laughs> so I think, like, since the game has kind of been done for a little while, I feel like those are almost out of my mind, and now it's just, like, all the logistical, mm -hmm. um, you know, things that it takes to do to actually get the game to everyone who ordered it. Right. So, um, from a team perspective, how many people do you actually have, or is it just one man, one woman? Um, <laughs> it's a, it's mostly me. My uh, partner uh, helped me with writing the story for the game, and I had a friend who did the uh, chat interface where you oh. submit the solutions. Um, but everything else was pretty much wow. me doing it. Wow, yeah. For sure. Well, no wonder so long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No sleep, no eating for yeah. two years, <laughs> finally. Oh, and, um, then, um, and an artist did the, the box cover as well. That wasn't uh, yeah. Oh, okay, wow. That Shout out to the artist. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely captivating. Yeah. When you look at it, it looks really amazing. Yeah. She did an amazing job. Yeah. Uh, one of the great time we're going to announce the um, sentence that you have to type in. Well, what, what, are, what are they getting if they... So, one winner will win the Apprentice Pack that's going to ship in 2021, and um, the Apprentice Pack will include two puzzles and two in applicants. Mm, Not one, but two. Two. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and what do they have to do? Uh, so now they have to type in Curious. Yeah. My middle name. Curious is my middle name. So type that in the comment section below on Facebook. Um, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you also have the Instagram opportunity also. or Instagram, anywhere on social media that you're watching this interview with Rita, uh, just type Curious is my middle name down in the comment section below and you'll automatically be entered into the raffle for the grand prize. Yeah, for sure. And I'm pretty sure everybody wants that because our first game is like Pretty much sold out. Yeah. I don't even know if you get a hold of it anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there were only 500 copies, so it, they're just, they're gone. <laughs> yeah. How many copies is uh, Emerald Flame? Yeah, that's going, going to be, be like, one of our questions later, but. Um, still TBD, but probably around 5,000 or so. Okay. Well, a much larger scale. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> That, so that was one of my questions, I guess, for the game creators out there as well. How do you estimate in terms of how many copies you would like to print? Um, and you, obviously, you don't want to print like overprint, but then you also want to underprint. So how do you estimate that? Well, I think um, that's one way in which the Kickstarter is really useful for gauging actually how much interest there is because. 
before I launched, I was like, well, the minimum is 1500 so I hope I can raise enough money to print at least that much. Um, and I didn't know like what level of response it was going to get, and we got about 3,400 3, backers. Um, wow. So at that point, it makes more sense to just print 5,000, so that way I have extra ones to sell afterward. Yeah, or else you're going to see a lot of those eBay situations. <laughs> <laughs> or a lot of people asking me to print it again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, so that was a, another question, too. So I know that you've also been seeing that with uh, the reprint requests for your previous game, mm. but um, how difficult it is to reprint it? Like, will they ever have a chance of having a copy? Um, well, the thing is that it's just so labor intensive to make, and that's why I knew that I couldn't make more than 500 copies. So I my thought that is if if I ever do decide to sort of reprint it, I think I would also redesign certain elements of it and make it like a second edition rather than mm -hmm. a reprint. Um, because I think also just like having the experience and the knowledge that I have now and after doing more design work, I can kind of go back to uh, previous puzzles, which I think in retrospect are maybe a little bit flawed or like need a little more signposting or maybe have too much going on. Um, right, kind right. Of just rethink through those and see if I can make some small adjustments to just make the gameplay um, flow a little bit more smoothly. Yeah, I, guess, I, I think that if you were to entertain this thought, <laughs> you would have a lot of customers uh, hitting you up because I think uh, it's playing something that was already has a great reputation, but then even more updated with the knowledge that you have now um, to something that's more mass produced, I think they would be a lot more curious to say oh, what is the hype about and now it's even more improved oh my god i have to check it out yeah. but sometimes yeah, you know, I mean, the biggest challenge is just figuring out how to actually make it at a at a at a scale because there's certain parts of it that you just can't really do so those are things that i would really have to um redesign how they're how they function and how they're presented right gotcha. But I feel like also the fact that it, you know, it, it wasn't that many, it kind of felt like a limited edition kind of copies, mm -hmm. and it actually intrigued a lot more interest in the <laughs> Yeah, so. that's true, but, you know, I think if I, if I do redo it, I would love to offer it to people at a lower price point than what it was as, like, a handmade version, because mm -hmm. I think it also was just a little in, more, or a little less accessible just because the the price was so high mm. yeah so i mean like talking about that too i was thinking of how beautiful you know like some of their drawings were and uh with the fact that we have to like sometimes write on them i was a little <laughs> worried because i wasn't sure if we were supposed to i know you had to after you're like oh my god she should have told me you could totally do that but i was like i still don't feel like i want to because i felt like i'm like destroying yeah it's art like pieces. vandalizing <laughs> art <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I was a bit worried that that would happen, and that's why actually I wrote it in the instructions. I was like, "You will need to write on stuff, so don't be afraid uh, to go." Um, and I mean, if anybody's like really worried about that, they can print another one or photocopy it or use the one from the refill kit. Um, right. I, I think it's fun to actually be able to write on your game. So, like, I I prefer to to do it if if I can, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for the uh, for the refill kit, um, what what is what will it be like? What kind of refill are you talking about? Like, is it all the so pages? That you know? It's not all of them. Um, everything that kind of requires writing on it in order to solve, or like, would be really annoying to solve if you didn't have like if you weren't able to write on it. Those are replaced. Um, there's two, three items that get destroyed, and those are replaced. So, uh, yeah. okay. That's good. Um, and I guess then, in that sense, it could be semi -repl replayable if they wanted to play with another group or something. Or is it I more. Mean, if, you, if you didn't know, like if you only solved some of the puzzles and you your teammates didn't explain them to you, the ones that they did, then like in theory, you could play it and just solve the puzzles that you didn't solve before. Um, mm -hmm. But really, I think it's just people want to be able to pass the game on to someone else, and and you know I understand that because it's pretty substantial. So if I if I have like a substantial game like that, then I would also love to be able to pass it to a friend if I can. All right. 
But I mean, like, because also you have uh, three episodes in this entire game, um, sometimes mm-hmm. people play, like, story one and then sort of uh, wait for a bit, and then they can continue on to story two, because it was pretty extensive. Yeah. The, uh, right. The mm-hmm. second, the second uh, episode, I felt like, was a, a bit easier, so I was glad that you gave us a breather. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I think we can still make it. And then we did, we did all three in, like, one Yeah, day. we got a chance to rebuild three, our confidence. Yeah. I know, it's a <laughs> marathon. <laughs> I don't, yeah, we were screwed. I don't recommend it. It was not good. <laughs> My brain also gets fried after, you know, five hours of puzzling. Yeah. <laughs> but after we did the first one, it kind of left us intrigued. Like, oh, I want to find out what happened yeah, next. So, yeah, I so we wanted to see it through to the end. We kind of binge, binge played your game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, so then talking about the difficulty uh, of the game, do you feel like yours is more beginner like intermediate or more for um, people who have played you know. oh yeah well, how would you rate your uh difficulty level yeah i mean i guess i would rate it like three and a half out of five maybe mm-hmm. uh, okay um really it's kind of right you know, it's a little harder than most escape rooms and maybe a little harder than, like, um, the typical escape room in a box games. It's definitely a little more advanced than that. But, like, if you're somebody who plays a lot of puzzle hunts, those are way harder. Yeah. 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 This, I mean, at least these ones, you um, are able to get to the end. Some of the, the those puzzle hunts, they don't even give you clues. It's like, I'm going to torture you. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've had a couple. I've had a couple big, more beginner um, level people test it as well, and I was actually pleasantly surprised that they did, you know, basically as well as people who had, you know, like an intermediate amount of experience. Um, and to me, that seemed like it just meant that the puzzles made sense, that they were able to like make the same amount of progress, even if they weren't quite as right. used to these types of puzzles. And also, I feel like for sometimes when you're looking into a puzzle differently than somebody who's played so many, you definitely realize some new things. Because you're not overthinking yeah, things. Yeah, you always overthink yeah. things. You're like, no, it's yeah. too easy. Let's be hard for something. <laughs> I think it also really varies per puzzle per person because, um, like, that butterfly puzzle, there was one person who solved it in three minutes without writing anything down. And then there was another person who it took them, like, 20 minutes to solve yeah. what they have to do. So, you know, it kind of, I mean, maybe it just depends on like which direction you go at first, like your first assumption is wrong, or maybe you're just like less yeah. good at one type of puzzle or the other. So, um, and that's why I wanted to have a variety of, of different types. So that way, like when you have a group and something, you know, some person is like, oh, I hate maps, you know, you do this one and then you can take a different thing and do that instead. So yeah, I do that with her. I hate reading, and then I give it to her. <laughs> give, give everyone a moment to shine. That's always great. Yeah. Yeah, always that's, that's always the goal. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, for prizes that you will give to puzzle creators, um, one, I mean, you don't want to give away all your secrets, but just like one tip <laughs> that you feel like, you know, you could share with the world on making their lives a bit easier when they're creating the game, what would it be? Just one? I mean, call me. I have a list for you. <laughs> my biggest beef is anything that doesn't have a hint system. <laughs> like anybody who has ever talked to me will know how much like my crusade of every puzzle having a hint system. Yeah, I'm really glad about that though, because yeah. I would be like emailing the person. Sometimes it's not even like, Tell me now. Because yeah. I need to like finish this game I mean, and don't. Because you want to keep going. Like if you if you get stuck for more than ten minutes, it just doesn't. It becomes not fun anymore. So why mm-hmm. would I want you to stop having fun? You know. Right. right. Yeah. They they like to play the uh, the villain in the background. Like hey, you're not getting past my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but then like it's like all right, I quit. I don't want to do it anymore. Well, like, who are you? Who are you making the game for? You know, are you making it? so that the player uh, has fun and like feels smart solving it? Or yeah. are you making it so that you feel smart because nobody can solve your puzzle? But like, right. you can you can do really stupid things and feel smart for nobody solving it, but it just means that it doesn't make any sense. Right. 
Yeah, we, we've come. Up, we, we we know some developers who are more about. Uh, <laughs> no one's gonna. I have a zero percent uh, uh, escape rate. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Future for post curious. Oh, mm. oh, by the way, if any of the listeners have any questions, so we're just going to uh, insert them um, as we see them coming. Yeah, in. just uh, as we're chatting. Just let us send it our way and we'll be happy to relay those to read them. Yeah, things that you you know need want to know before you press that pre-order button. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all right, so future for post curious. Any exciting works? I mean, I know you want to take vacation after two years, <laughs> but like anything else are you working on right now? <laughs> Quarantine is vacation. It's just vacation <laughs> inside. Yeah. <laughs> but um yeah, no, I've like I said, since things have sort of um I'm just waiting on factory stuff at this point for Emerald Flame. I've started working on other games, uh, which I can't say too much about right now, but there are multiple of them, and Ooh. I'm really excited for what they're going to turn into. Multiple mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, and one last question, which I feel like a lot of the players are interested in. Are there any Easter eggs in this game? Should, they, should, I, should I go back and replay this again? <laughs> Um, I don't think there's anything that you would have missed. Like, any puzzles are generally signposted. Like, the only puzzle that you don't really have to solve to finish the game is the one in the epilogue. Um, and that was like a bonus thing that we added with the Kickstarter. Um, but mm -hmm. it's pretty clearly there. So, <laughs> so it's yeah. hard to miss it. Um, the only sort of Easter egg I would say is that if somebody has played the Tale of War, then there might be a name or two that they recognize in the, in the game. But other than that, it's, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Krista Jones. Uh, she wanted to know, as an artist designer who was self-publishing, how did you go about learning the business production shipping side of it? Oof, um, just a lot of internet research and yeah. like reading, um, like Jamie Stegmaier's blog is really good if you're ever thinking about cr crowdfunding. Um, something okay. it's got a ton of information but um, I learned a little bit about shipping when I was doing Tale of Ward but that was like me shipping everything myself so figuring out how to like ship things from overseas is, is a hugely steep learning curve and I haven't really done it yet so <laughs> you know maybe we'll talk in a year and then I'll have more information for you but um, but yeah it's just kind of taking a crash course and like uh, you know, finding what companies you can use, like getting all the quotes that you can, and like mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's tough because once like when you're when you don't have the game quite done yet, and everybody's like, how much does it weigh? How many boxes of it are you gonna have? And I'm like, I don't know. And they're like, well, I can't give you a quote. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so it, it, it's hard because you have to really just do a lot of estimating and kind of figure out your budget um, right. and how yeah. much you're gonna how much money you're going to need to raise to actually be able to deliver it to people. Mm -hmm. We heard from our friends uh, at uh, Curiosity, so yeah, Society Society Curiosity that uh, they added one little gold coin and then like, like the shipping went up like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard it can. to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, yeah, yeah, it's hard to knowledge. research that too, because sometimes it's just like a specific threshold where you know, if it's 12 ounces, then you're fine. But if it's 14, then suddenly it's a package, you know? So it's yeah. like things like that, unpredictable. I just think that you have uh, language uh, translations on your, um, the booklet for uh, the instructions. Are you offering these in different languages? Um, so we're offering a PDF translation for people to download uh, when they buy the game. So. Uh, you saw the link in there, it's in the instructions, and if they go there, they'll be able to just download a PDF of all of the game text in that language. So that's going to be the instructions, and then all of the letters, and all of the, like, every clue to every puzzle, just any words that are written in the game will be in this, in this translation. Um, so it, you'll, like, they'll need to use it alongside the game materials in order to actually solve the puzzles, um, but since a lot of the puzzles aren't really language dependent, it'll I think it'll allow people to be able to enjoy the game while reading the big bulks of text in in their own language. Oh, okay. So you okay. have three, right? Three other languages. Yeah, we're doing Spanish, German, and French. French. Yeah. 
Okay. Wow. Yeah. All right. So I think these are all our questions. Yeah. Um, well, before uh, we want to get more people ch a chance to enter the raffle. Oh, yeah. Okay. Again. So the raffle, um, once again, if you type in Curious is my middle name, um, you'll be entering the raffle um, and we'll announce the winner in the next next mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but for another portion of our game, we have something uh, that we're going to challenge Rita with. Uh, we're going to ask her questions about her own game. <laughs> and the game that we play is called... Think or Drink! Or drink. drink. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, so um, what are you drinking, Rita? I've got a um, thematically green cocktail over here. Ooh, Ooh homemade or... <laughs> Mm-hmm. Feels very okay. like the emerald kind of I know. You have the color. uh the theme yeah, emerald, right. um <laughs> part of the part of the collector's edition for the Emerald Flame is uh has a cocktail recipe bonus puzzle. Mm -hmm. Um so you have wow. to solve the puzzle and then you get the ingredients to, for the recipe. So um I was working on that last week and uh here I am. Now that's an incentive. <laughs> so I can't tell you what's in it because it's a secret. How many uh, how many test ones did you do for that one? <laughs> <laughs> um, surprisingly, not too many. It was a lot of very like careful measuring and half <laughs> making half portions, you know, and add a little bit here, a little bit there, kind of thing. How, how many beta tests did you have for that? You didn't invite a whole bunch of friends over and... <laughs> no, no friends over, but it, we did actually have a virtual um, cocktail tasting. I had two friends oh, nice. buy the same ingredients and then we were all trying it and figuring yeah. out what was the best combination. So at least uh, you can have confidence that more than one person has tried this drink. <laughs> wow. Uh, so I'm drinking uh, Kizakura, which is a Nigori coconut sake. Nice. Um, just want to change it up a little bit because I've been drinking too fruity. It keeps going fruity. <laughs> so I love fruity. Hardcore. Fruity's not, not bad, you know. It definitely yeah. has a nice taste. It's on the summer. Palate. It's refreshing. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So we ask Rita a question. If she gets it right within ten seconds, uh, we're gonna have to use our own timer because we're having technical difficulties. Um, then if she gets it right within the ten seconds. Then I will drink. Okay. If not, she's gonna taste her emerald flame. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a question. After we answer a question, Brenda's gonna count down from ten to one. And um, uh, if you answer it before the countdown is finished, then uh, perfect. Yeah. Um. We get the right? timer. Um. No, you're just counting. Oh, I'm just looking at that. Yeah. Okay. Um. So our first question is: What are the three animals on the door plaques of the six houses? Ten. On um, on the door plaques. Um, swan, lion, and snake. I should have went 10 on 10 to 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Chairs, chairs, chairs. How is it? Ooh, you'll like this one. It's sweet again. It's another sweet one. Have your own shot cups. Yeah, or plastic cups. This is this is also in uh, pre-production as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Second question. So one of the mushrooms um, was blue in your mushroom section. Do you remember what Roman numeral was next to it? Ten, nine, eight, Ooh. seven, six, five, four, three, mm, was it two. Was six? It was six. <laughs> uh -oh, I was about to say one. <laughs> Cheers. She's like, I'm thirsty. I'm actually okay you, with you getting all the answers right. This, uh... Sure. <laughs> um, all right. Okay, third question. Hopefully wait, wait. Let me, let me ask this one and you count down. Okay. I thought she wasn't going to get the other two right, so I was giving her an easier one. Wait, it gets now, easier from here? Like... She did the question, so... <laughs> I'm screwed. That she did this on purpose. That was not easy. I just, I was like trying to imagine the page in my head and where. <laughs> I know, you got all the way down to like two, but like one did, and a half. She and did like draw all of this. Ten seconds is not a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, question number three, and then she's going to count down. What's the name of the society and who's the chairman? The Country Society, the chairman is Jules Redmond. Say $20 easy. Any uh, <laughs> significance of the name? Or just... um, 
Yes, there is, but you should Google it because I don't want to. That's I guess oh. that's kind of an Easter egg, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't think of it. All right, on the clock tower story, what two Roman numerals are the hands pointed to? Ten, nine, oh. eight, seven, six. One. Five, I don't think four, there is another hand. Two, one. I mean the, the other hand. I didn't think there is another hand. <laughs> Wait, so that. this means we both drink? Cause sure. Just give him a little. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, half, half I don't want to drink a little. So. Not, not really the hand. I meant like the, uh, the, 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 the top and the end part. Like, you know, off the at one hand. So oh. Well, I mean, I guess it would be seven then. One and three was the New Roman numerals that it was going. Um, oh, the Roman numerals that it was going. Yeah, okay. I wouldn't have guessed the second one, but uh, I, know, I know the first one. I know it's pointing to one. Yes, we kind of got her. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of. This one might be a little easy for her, too. I did go easy on this one. <laughs> All right, here we go. The last guess we had, she literally was asking the hardest questions. And... I know. All right, so number five. All right, so number five. What, are, what are the colors of the stars? On the constellation plate, there are five. Ten. Blue, yellow, green, red, purple. <laughs> that was so fast. Like, I, I stopped <laughs> counting. I was just like. <laughs> oh my gosh. We do have a bonus question for you, though. We don't even really need a bonus question. Yeah, I mean, I think you're, you're, you're like 90, 95% here. Um, I'm not playing drinking games with you in person. So. <laughs> well, no, at least not on her on her game. Oh uh, yeah, her. definitely not on your game. Uh, all right, what kind of building structure is next to the word "start" on the traveling map? Ten. The one with the days and the directions. Ten, nine, eight. <laughs> you couldn't stick her with the bonus question at least. Like, I thought it was difficult, but I don't. I don't know. Thank you for playing Think or Drink with us, Rita. Um, obviously, yeah. you know your own game. You know your product, which, you know, yes. uh, yeah, yeah, we know how much work you put into it because you were so involved with the creation of it. And uh, that's what we love. Two years hard work. Definitely see the blood and sweat in the yeah. game, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. And thank you for coming on to our interview today. We had a lot thanks of fun so with you. Me. Yeah, this was fun. Um, and uh, we'll definitely yeah. have this interview once again up on our YouTube channel and on our IGTV if you missed the uh, like or miss. Yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube or Instagram or any social media that we have this video up, feel free to type in Curious is my middle name and you will automatically be entered into the raffle for her prize, which will be available in, in 2021. 2021. So far, but yes, the books. I know, yeah. so far. <laughs> Definitely so far. well worth the wait, though. So if you don't want to wait and you want to pre order now, go ahead and. Uh, now, we'll pin. Those yeah. Really pretty. Yeah. For sure. Um, but thank you so much. And we had thank a lot you. of fun with you. Yeah, we look forward to meeting you in person soon and hopefully playing a game together. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thanks, Rita. Take care. Bye. Bye. Three hits left for me to choose. Two hits left for me to use. One hit left for me to move. Time is running now. Gotta figure something out. Three hits left for me to choose. Two hits left for me to use. One hit left for me to move. Time is running now. Gotta figure something out.